talking about doomed and talking about things that aren't that great um i was thinking a lot actually about um my friend joshua sweeney passing so r.i.p joshua sweeney always r.i.p joshua sweeney always and one thing that always that kind of like grub that kind of i've been mulling over actually is the idea of like the only thing you remember somebody with once they pass is pictures and i'm really fortunate in that that time when i was growing up the time like when i left to go to even though even when i was at the church actually i've got i just checked my flicker now i need to find out a way how i can make it all public maybe i have to kind of like edit it and shit but i've got an entire flicker full of just pictures from many 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 years ago that i need to flip it make sure that i tighten up and shit and maybe even download them all from flicker in case flicker ends up going under but essentially from when i was a teenager i would always have a camera on me i'd have like a little slr on me i have a little digital camera 35 millimeter camera i was always the one snapping pictures and most of it came because i was trying to copy like you know um cobra snake and i forgot who the other guy was it was this other dude who basically i think he was maybe persian or something he kind of like a pirate and that's an arab parrot that's his name I don't know if you guys remember this guy called Arab Parrot back in the day, but him and Cobra Snake was two of the biggest dudes on the scene who were doing really great nightlife pictures. And this other guy too, this other black guy as well, I think his name is Bronkes or something from um, Last Night's Party. And that whole entire nightlife photography scene was something that I lived for. And I think when I was growing up, a lot of it had to do with the fact that I had such a rigid and you know um life where i wasn't really allowed to go out um i grew up in a really religious home really strict and stuff you know standard african parent stuff so i guess i sort of like fantasized and you know um mystified the flipping outside right i made it seem like it was more amazing than what it actually was in the end it just ended up being like clubs with people drinking and doing drugs really it wasn't that amazing but when you're somewhere that's super sheltered and you're not really allowed out that much going out and experiencing that things at night is really amazing so i picked up the hobby of just having my camera with me all the time and then i guess when i then started to you know have friends and my social group started to increase the benefit of having a camera was pretty sick because i would always be documenting our nights sometimes i think they didn't really like it because i was always have a camera on me i'd have like a little flipping flash thing on top of it and she i'll be always recording stuff so maybe if you're trying to get up to some madness and you see me chopping around in my flipping big head with my little slr camera wrapped around my waist you probably weren't too happy to see me but the good thing about it is that since you know now many years have gone by since that time and a lot of those people i don't even speak to anymore i've got the memories of the pictures and instantly as soon as i see the pictures it kind of transports me to that moment and usually you know i'm somebody that doesn't really have the greatest memory anyway in general i'm sure all the years of like drinking and doing drugs hasn't helped but in general i've never really had the greatest memory i think that's also another like you know another issue that i probably should be talking to a psychiatrist about because i think a lot of the reasons why i don't have a great memory is that i do it on purpose like i purposely like you know um factory reset myself head wise memory wise because i don't want to remember some stuff because some memories are really hurtful some are painful um you know whatever it may be so i just try to delete them from my brain i guess i do that all the time and and then i started doing it as a way to like cope with loss so if i ended up like you know quote unquote breaking up with a friend a way to just get over it was just to delete it from my brain and to the point where i'd literally forget the person's name really toxic because you know you're friends with that person and you, you know a good way to deal with those issues is obviously talk to somebody or talk to them but my way of dealing with it was just to kind of delete it from my brain so i didn't remember it at all but whenever i see a picture i'm instantly transported to that place and time instantly without a shadow of a doubt so um what it made me think of when you know the unfortunate news came that joshua sweeney passed away and i dig through my pictures to see and to remember kind of the good times that we had together instantly i kind of felt to myself wow man i regret all the time i wasted in between you know what i mean because i couldn't even remember like legitimately i tell you now i can't honestly remember why exactly we fell out i know we did fall out for something but i don't think it was that deep you know that's the issue it was just mostly pride ego and all that shit got in the way and i'm not really somebody that could could that easily like you know offers out my hand and says so I'm, I'm just not that guy so um especially when it gets to that point where i feel like i've been disrespected or something because i always feel like i'm a decent enough to human i'm sure I, i'm sure on the other side of things people could say i'm a piece of shit but on my side of things i think usually i go about my i try to go out my way to be a nice person so if somebody doesn't reciprocate that i have this oftentimes you know uh 
automatic sort of response to just like block them or block them out completely delete them from my my memory factory reset them you don't exist i don't remember nothing like fuck off do you know what i mean type of vibe to a point where it'll get physical like it's really crazy how weird and kind of twisted my brain is in that regard which probably helps that i don't have friends because i don't think that sort of brain and that sort of way of dealing with people is really the great way to make friends right it probably isn't the best way but honestly when i saw those pictures of josh sweeney and stuff it made me remember it made me honestly regret all the time in between that i wasted not just picking up the phone not texting not saying something and i have to be honest like i can't even lie and say i didn't think about it like in the last couple of months i did it did cross my mind here and there because i'd see his profile picture pop up on my like suggested oh this person you should follow them or something and i'll be like i should say something in it but then i'll just like move on straight away um because obviously in my head i, I decided yep that person's deleted they're gone from my life and it's not even like an op thing it's not even like I saw him as an op. It was just more so like, I don't know why my brain works like that. I think it's, again, I think it's just my way to cope with loss when I feel like I've lost something, especially a friendship, because I feel like those things are honestly way more hurtful than losing a relationship, especially on my side of things, because maybe I come in a little bit too hot. Maybe I'm a little bit too much. Who knows? People are like, hey, leave me alone now. Um, or there's that whole lifestyle shaming thing people do with you. And it was like, oh, you know, I've moved on. I'm not in the party anymore. And you are the party guy. And I, you're a bad influence, whatever it may be, which is obviously the wrong thing to say, because it's not even like I, you know, I'm on that same level anymore. But again, I'm also not the person that wants to explain myself. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to justify my existence and try to convince you that I don't party as much. It's like, no, if you think that, you think that, no problem. But also, you know, you're dead to me kind of thing. So that was my kind of like my mood. Um, but it just made me think that in general, going forward, I've been doing it anyway. I'm definitely going to make sure that I'm carrying my camera around with me all the flipping time. You know, it's so handy to have those memories where you can kind of look back and think, rah, man, we have so, so many great times. Um, and it's a shame that, you know, he's not around anymore, obviously. Um, that's clearly the worst part of it. But at least, at least, especially for someone like myself, who isn't the most um you know friendly in that respect doesn't really have the best tact when it comes to dealing with people at least i have these memories where i can kind of savor and look upon and think yeah man we had a good time you know and i think sometimes as well like i said before as great as it is to be like you know trying to rescue situations rescue relationships and friendships and moments and stuff i think it's also very important to just savor that time that you had that memory and just leave it there you know sometimes because when you try and chase things I've, I've experienced it myself in recent years like and you think you think one thing about the memory because again look, these especially when it's a shared experience one person has one side of one person has one view of that experience the other person has another view of the experience and you can't influence the other person to feel like the way that you feel it just isn't just doesn't make any sense really so you have to just leave the person to you know have whatever emotion they have or don't have and then you hold on to whatever you hold on to but trying to chase it can sometimes sully it to the point where you would regret ever reaching out to that person and i've been that guy so i recommend that you don't do that if possible but yeah man it's been a tough one i'm not gonna lie um it's not been tough as in like sadness it's just been more so like wow man like you know like getting to age where like friends are dying and you're like shit and I guess it would be it would have been more understandable if it was like a lifestyle thing. I don't know, guy went skateboarding, going out and stuff, maybe some drugs up, but it's not, do you know what I mean? It's just like ugh, yeah, it's it's mad, man. It's it's really mad. You get to that point now, but um and the other part as well, me, I kind of I think and I think I think that's why maybe I haven't really been the greatest in terms of social media stuff, because I think in general you kinda have to put that moral principled stance thing to one point to one side because i even felt super lame even posting my little tribute that i did on instagram i haven't even logged back into my account since i posted i'm just like i, I don't want to see you know the outpouring of support and stuff it's just going to make me upset and stuff so but i posted what i posted and it, i felt lame about posting it because like i said i hadn't really even spoken to the guy in the last few years do you know what i mean like we legitimately were strangers i had legitimately haven't spoken to him in ages but again we had a very intense and close relationship for a very long time during our very formative years and then all of a sudden nothing you know what i mean because of some miscommunication because of some i don't know what happened i really don't i wish i could remember what actually happened what led to us not talking but whatever it was it wasn't worth it and um yeah man like i, I even felt fake even posting that i felt like you know what what am i doing 
like I haven't spoken to the guy and here I am posting a tribute as if like we're like the closest buddy we were the closest buddies at that point which obviously isn't the point you know I'm honoring his legacy I understand that but I just felt so fake and lame you know and I think people do that anyway, isn't it, right? They just post something, a tribute about somebody, especially somebody famous. And you saw a lot happen with Virgil. It was fucking disgusting, especially for me, because, you know, I was kind of in the inside when I was working with him or worked with a company that worked with him. And I saw how the people in the industry reacted to him when he was on his, you know, on his come up. And a lot of these people were like saying mad, bad things about this guy behind his back, you know, to us, of course, because they, they, they knew we wouldn't report back to him or I was in the same scene. I could hear these sort of things. And then to see these guys, like turn around and start pretending that they were best friends and you know eulogizing him in the text and stuff and sharing sms's and dms that like gross 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 so um that made me feel awful and again that's different because that's a flipping you know that's a famous person but i don't know i just felt so fake posting it. i really did it took me a while to post it um and then when i did i just didn't want to look at it again so um yeah man it's been a tough one i'm not gonna lie just a kind of process in my head really in that respect because you know the guy was there and now he's not here anymore and um yeah man and we didn't really have a chance to piece it up or anything that's a really bad thing about it and it's not even about me it's just more so like raw like i took time for granted i actually thought yeah we're gonna figure it out along the way or we won't you know and now we won't ever figure it out. It's just kind of gone forever. So, yeah, I don't know what message to take from that, really, or what you can take from that. But that was just rummaging through my head and how I was just trying to process it and make some sort of sense of it. You know how it is.